Hello out there! My name is Karen Striegel, and I am the Special Education Coordinator for Alternate Assessment, Low Incidence Disabilities, and Medicaid School-Based Services. I am pleased to welcome you to the first episode of the ISAT Interim and Summative Assessment Accessibility Training Series. The purpose of this training series is to prepare IEP teams, general education, special education, and ESL teachers, school, school and district test coordinators, and school and district administrators to choose and provide allowable assessment accessibility features for students taking ISAT interim and summative assessments. Ha! Huh, say that three times fast. Allowable assessment accessibility features. Allowable assessment accessibility features. Allowable assessment accessibility features. What a mouthful! There are four episodes in this training series. This first episode will give you an overview of the assessment accessibility features available on the ISAT Interim and Summative Assessments in ELA Literacy, Math, and Science. The remaining episodes in the series will explain the three levels of assessment accessibility features, universal tools, designated supports, and accommodations in detail. The purpose of this episode is to introduce you to the Usability, Accessibility, and Accommodations Guidelines, what I like to call the OOG, developed by Smarter Balanced. I'll define key terms related to ISAT accessibility and show you how to locate the resources you need to choose and provide appropriate accessibility features to students when they take the ISAT interim and summative assessments. I will start by explaining the purpose of the accessibility features. I will introduce you to our friendly UWOG. I will explain the conceptual model behind the accessibility features available on ISAT interim and summative assessments and the structure of the UWOG itself. I'll finish episode one by telling you how to locate the UWOG and other accessibility resources on the ISAT portal. I think of the purpose of assessment accessibility features in terms of answering the question, who cares? Although I guess the first question should be, what are accessibility features? We used to talk about testing accommodations, but as a department, we started talking about accessibility features last year. We use this more general term because it includes accommodations and the designated supports that any student with an identified need can use on the ISAT interim and summative assessments. I'll explain a little bit about designated supports in a few minutes. Now back to answering the question, who cares? I have had lots of conversations with general education teachers across the years who are worried that when students use accommodations on statewide assessments, that it gives them an advantage over students who do not get to use any accommodations. Think of assessment accessibility features in terms of leveling the playing field. It's a matter of equality or equity. I love this image because it shows people of differing heights trying to see over the fence to watch a baseball game. If they all have the same box, the short people can't see. I have lived this my entire life. Giving people a different configuration of boxes so they can all see over the fence does not give some an advantage over others. It levels the playing field so everybody can see. Although giving people a way to see over the fence does give them an advantage over those who bought tickets to the game. So when we talk about assessment accessibility, we are talking about providing each student with a positive and productive assessment experience and generating results that are a fair and accurate estimate of each student's achievement. The Smarter Balanced Assessments were built on a framework of accessibility designed to support participating students with a variety of accessibility resources so the assessments accurately measure the achievement and growth of students with disabilities, English learners, English learners with disabilities, and all other general education students. 
the validity of assessment results depends on each and every student having appropriate access to the test based on student need, which are in line with the intended constructs being measured by the assessment. Availability of these accessibility features may differ by grade, content area, and the intended construct within each of the content areas. It's time to meet your friendly UWOG. The UWOG is the accessibility manual developed by Smarter Balanced. It describes all of the accessibility features that students are allowed to use when taking the Smarter Balanced assessments, which are our ISATs in English Language Arts and Mathematics and the ISAT Science Assessment. Did she say ISAT Science? Yes, she said ISAT Science too. Students taking the ISAT Science Assessments in grades 5, 8, and 11 are allowed to use the applicable accessibility features described in the Smarter Balanced UOG. The UOG is intended for use by IEP team members, 504 teams, ILLP teams, general education, special education, and English as a second language or ESL teachers, school or district test coordinators, and school or district administrators. Any and all of these professionals will use the UWOG when choosing and providing accessibility features to students taking the ISAT interim and summative assessments in ELA, math, and science. Only by following the accessibility features guidance outlined in the UWOG can professionals ensure that all students will receive valid test results. Educators should have the same performance expectations for all students, including students with disabilities, English learners, English language learners with disabilities, and other general education students. These guidelines are designed so that all students are offered an equitable opportunity to show what they know. Using the UOG ensures that students who need it will get individualized access to the ISATs in ELA, Mathematics, and yes, Science. Now for a few words about the conceptual model that Smarter Balance developed to articulate three levels of accessibility features. This nested image of universal tools, designated supports, and accommodations appears on page 7 of the UOG. Universal tools are accessibility features of the assessment that are available to all students based on student preference and selection. Designated supports are available for students who have a need, indicated by an educator or a team of educators that includes a parent or guardian, and the student when appropriate. The educator making the decision must be knowledgeable of the student's needs, as well as the student's familiarity and success with resources available. Accommodations are available when the need is documented on an IEP or 504 plan, or in unique circumstances when a student may not typically require an accommodation, may make use of one. For example, consider a student who has not needed an accommodation in the past who breaks an arm. This student might use a scribe if the need is appropriately documented. It is up to the district or charter school to determine what that appropriate documentation might be. These three levels of accessibility features are nested in the graphic because they're additive. Students with disabilities may use designated supports and universal tools in addition to any accommodations listed on their IEP or 504 plan. I will talk about universal tools designated supports and accommodations in more detail in the other three episodes of the ISAT Interim and Summative Assessment Accessibility Training Series. Another designated given to the accessibility features described in the UWOG have to do with how students access them. Embedded refers to those accessibility features provided as digitally delivered components of the test administration system. For example, color contrast or audio. Non-embedded refers to those accessibility features provided locally 
or that are essentially separate from the tested menstruation system. For example, a 100s table or refreshable braille. I think it will help you make sense of the UOG if I say a few words about how the document is structured. The UOG is divided into several parts. The introduction, of course, introduces the document and explains the conceptual model that is the basis for the universal tools, designated supports, and accommodations in the guidelines. Section 1 features the universal tools available on our ELA, Mathematics, and Science ISATs. Section 2 features the available designated supports, and Section 3 features the allowable accommodations. Appendix A provides a summary list of the allowable universal tools, designated supports, and accommodations for quick reference. Appendix B describes lessons learned from research on the use of universal design, accessibility tools, and accommodations in assessment. Appendix C provides answers to frequently asked questions. Appendix D provides the current read aloud guidelines. Appendix F provides the current scribing protocol. And Appendix F provides a revision log that lists all the changes to the UWOG by section, page, description, date, and version. You might be thinking, this is all great information, but where do I find this friendly UWOG? What other resources are available to help me choose and implement these accessibility features? Well, you go to the ISAT portal. Where else? When you go to the Accessibility and Accommodation section of the ISAT portal, the first thing you will see is a link to the non-standard accommodation request form. You'll use this form if you have a student who needs a testing accommodation that is not allowable based on the UOG. Be on the lookout for an infographic explaining when and how to use the non-standard accommodation request form. The next items on the list are the UOG and accompanying guidance documents. The Accessibility Resources Comparison is useful because it outlines which universal tools, designated supports, and accommodations are the same or different from the previous year's UOG. The ELA Literacy and Math Resources and Practice Comparison Crosswalk document is particularly valuable because it describes relevant pedagogical practices and common instructional practices that align with the accessibility features included in the UOG. All the rest of the resources related to choosing and providing allowable accessibility features appear in alphabetical order. They include Guidelines for choosing text-to-speech or read-aloud in grades 3 through 5. Guidelines for read-aloud. Guidelines for read-aloud in Spanish. Individual Student Assessment Accessibility Profile, the ISAAP. This is a, a decision-making tool. Instructions for using embedded glossaries. Online dictionary guidelines. Paper pencil test administration manuals for ELA and math. Scribing Protocol for ISAT Assessments, 100's Multiplication Table, 100's Number Table. Phew, that's a lot of resources. All at your fingertips in the ISAT portal. Now take a deep breath. You just completed Episode 1 of the ISAT Interim and Summative Assessment Accessibility Training Series. I hope you will join me for the next three episodes in the series where we will take a look at each level of assessment accessibility features in detail. Maybe you're ready for some binge watching. Maybe not. Be sure to download your copy of the UOG to have it ready for the rest of the training series. Thank you for taking the time to view this training video. I appreciate what you do to ensure all students have access to the Idaho Comprehensive Assessment System. Please do not hesitate to contact me if you have questions about assessment accessibility.